Hi, uh, welcome to the DSX Human Revolution Director's Cut uh, commentary. Here is Jean-François Duga, the game director on the game, and I'm with... Mary DeMarle, I am the lead writer on the game. And I'm Jonathan Jacques Belletet, and I'm the art director. And I'm Steve Shipkowski, I'm the audio director. Right. And we'll have probably some Almost. guests with us today. What so, do you mean, Almost. With the first cutscene, well, when we started this project, we were kind of like... A few weeks of it was important to us to have links to the X1, the and, but we wanted it to be subtle. Clinics. We didn't want it to be totally we in your face, even though the first character you see is Bob Cage. <laughs> <laughs> but, but you're not supposed to know that. We wanted it to be subtle, so the first thing we did was <laughs> to do <laughs> just that. <laughs> but what is strange, even with the Die Hard fans, when they saw it for the first time, most of them didn't recognize it, even though we, we tried back the real actor. Yeah, we, had to, we, we went out of our way to find the real actor. We thought it was important to keep the continuity. And to use it and thought the hardcore fans would really like it. And I think the plan was to keep the guy really in the shadows. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I remember I was with uh, Dominique the Master Lightning guy, I was darker, put it darker, and it was all constantly a debate of how much of his face we should see or not. <laughs> that was fun. more challenging than anticipated. Fortunately, thanks to David, I now know where to look. Yeah, so now uh, it's uh, the cutscene where we're introducing uh, Adam Jensen. Actually, this TV news is probably the only TV news that has some tre animated 3D in it, uh, which was the, uh, the original plan with um, those TV news. But uh, as we figured out the scope of what we had to produce, and we had so much yeah. to do, and with all the other cutscenes and stuff, we quickly realized that we wouldn't be able to. We wanted them all to be 3D. I know that when I was writing it, I wanted it to be like, first you wouldn't even know you were watching the news, you were actually seeing like the stuff going on at the, at the uh, Capitol building, and then slowly you realize, oh, it's news. But what we kind of didn't always work. Good night. And, and then with Megan and her necklace, that was another very important part for us because from something a story wrong. perspective, we wanted to establish no, me, um, something that was a part of her, something that made her human, and break. that would have on this relevance because eventually we had all these plans that like you might find it in the FEMA facility on, where she'd been taken you and, and stuff. Um, so yeah, it was a very different. important thing, but I think just that <laughs> we didn't yeah. necessarily communicate that. No, really. this, this is one of the few little times that me and you didn't talk or something about it because I usually things go pretty I well in terms of what you wanted and what I wanted. But uh, yeah, so at one point it was like, we're, you know, we had our, her design down and everything. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Megan was pretty much boss. finished in terms of what yeah. she would look like. I and I think it was either you or Jeff who came up and was like, where's her necklace? I'm like, what necklace? She's <laughs> <laughs> supposed to have a pearl Almost necklace. David. I'm like, really? And I'm like, the whole thing's done. She has this big collar and she's all zipped up. And I'm like, where am I going to put it? It's like, well, just put it over her, her clothes. I'm like, you don't put a necklace over her clothes. But we ended up doing it, which I think looks... Uh, yeah, no, no. I, I personally think it looks tacky, but it's fine. I mean, it works. It, it works. It works in the sense that it, 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 it did the purpose that it had to do. Patient X. That's nothing, Adam. Just some of the research. Look, we really have to go. Come on, slowpoke. So now we're in Megan's room. Yeah, this is Megan's office. Um, obviously, pretty much the first uh, in-game part of the entire game. Uh, this is um, this was a pretty important room for us because uh, since uh, the clutter is really important in the game, we wanted to make sure that it was there straight from the get-go. So this is one of the really, really good rooms in the entire game where it's uh, extremely cluttered. Uh, that pillar of the art direction was uh, quite well executed. And the Cyber Renaissance is, uh, you this, can already feel yeah, it. You, yeah, you can really start feeling it and all that. Um, it's not the biggest one. It's not, for Cyber yeah. Renaissance, it's yeah. not the biggest one, but definitely for the clutter, it's one of the good ones. Now, I have no idea why everybody's so messy in this game, though, and that <laughs> nobody 
cleans or, or, or uh, you know, puts their stuff in order, but it doesn't really yeah, matter anyway. When, when the, uh, the end of the world is coming, you That's have... So, internally, we've always referred to this section of the game as the walk and talk. Uh, and it actually wasn't the Where'd original opening there, for the game. Well, we had a completely it. different idea yeah. for the opening to be more of a training mission where you're infiltrating know. your own company as part of a security Sarah. test. But there was a lot, of, uh, a lot of discussions among the team and a lot of people didn't think we could pull that one off. And, and ultimately we ended up kind of taking a new direction on it yeah, and, yeah. and working in this kind of and vein. It, it became the, 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 the walk and talk and actually it was a, a nice way to have a good uh, show don't tell moment yeah. establishing the world and the characters. And right it, it, the exactly and at first I was because I really liked the original idea so I wasn't really keen for this the direction but then as I started working on the script I really did kind of start to like how it shows off the world mm -hmm. but I remember the first draft um, of the script I think it was Joe who pointed out that we were putting a lot of techno babble in there and it sounded, it sounded like much more star, it sounded star like it was yeah it sounded like it was like a big spaceship that they were running you know <laughs> So, so we had to kind of go through extra passes to, to fix that and, and to and lengthen it. Here to the right, it's cool. Like we yeah. have one of so our artists with he the wanted DOD. to have an homage to the six million dollar man, which uh, was really uh, really cool and showing off that we're not that young. <laughs> <laughs> that so, girl is such a bitch. There, <laughs> she said. Well, we had to establish all their characters right off the bat as fast as we could. Yeah. Yeah. As fast and it was could. another uh, nice addition about having the Versa Life logo. Yeah. And yes, and the arm. I remember a lot of discussions about this arm because it plays a very important part yeah. later in the game yeah. and we really needed to, to, to show showcase it. it yeah. and, and, and that's why he has one sleeve and on the other side yeah, doesn't yeah. have anything. <laughs> and I remember also yeah. with the artist thinking about what the arm should look like because right. it needed to be recognizable Absolutely. for when Tongue would have it but at the same time we, we didn't want it to be like, I don't know, just like purple or something, you know what Absolutely. I mean? It's, it needed a subtlety and at the same time something yeah. that you would remember. That's true. And that scene, like with the, the Claymore explosion, yeah, it cool took. It, it's really cool, but it took so long before it worked. Like the the dolls were always uh, staying in the <laughs> air or not moving or just falling on the ground. Yeah. And it takes time. Yeah. And if I remember correctly, they're just they're going to get in the elevator times. now. And uh, there was, I think, a lot of technical issues, first of all, with the elevator. But one of the things that we also wanted to do was we wanted to kind of um, focus. As they get into the elevator, you'll see suddenly we get the camera shot. Mm -hmm. And we kind of wanted to have this theme running through the game that this is Eliza who is controlling the cameras and watching Jensen all the way from the start. Spying. And spying on you. So here this was a good moment and uh, my one regret was it was such a great idea and I think the cinematic director brought it up yeah. but then just unfortunately never carried it through with many of the rest of it. How far you go? Yeah, it was, uh, it was a very good idea that uh, we ended up not really carrying, <laughs> yeah. carrying through. Well, you know, we got so when you've got a do. project this big, yeah. So now they talk about the it. dog, right? The, the, the famous oh, that's dog, right? right. The dog. The dog was Adam's dog. Yes, that was something when we were working on one of yeah. our earliest demos of the game, it. and so. we had to fill the world. One one of the scriptwriters um, said we should have this email about Adam's dog, and it should be dead. And and I was, you know, at first my reaction to that was, oh, that's terrible. But as long as it's not a cat, it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> and dogs, dogs are fine. And they then we die. were able to take. <laughs> that and carry it through much more now we get one of our favorite characters yeah, for yes two. and right, this here sure. like what is really cool is that just like a real guy he just looked very not too subtly Fix that bar to wall, Megan's yeah. ass I <laughs> like quick With, glance at her butt exactly and I, th I think it had the uh, authenticity yeah, yeah, the well, fact that he also did it in front of her ex-boyfriend it definitely and tells you a lot about the character right off the top like he's, he hasn't even spoken a word yet and just that action speaks volumes as to his relationship Sarah, with Adam yeah. it's Andreas uh, and on, uh, Andreas yes. Asperges yes. Asperges did yeah. and actually it was quite fun because I think from a writing perspective we really wanted Jen Pritchard to be this this dick and Andreas was so good he would he come in and he would do this and after every take he would finish it and go god I hate that guy and now we hear the, the unit theme. The unit yeah theme. I really thought when I heard what Mike had done there was there was a chance right there to kind of bring a little homage Touch. to the UNATCO theme and we felt like this was sort of our new UNATCO and we wanted to just give a, a little nod to it and I found it was a great way to showcase into the, the beautiful room that uh, John and his team designed yeah. here. Yeah, no, no, and it worked really well because we just so has that point now but when we first walk into the corridor that leads into David's, uh, David's uh, office, 
is really one of my favorite parts of the game. Just the way you crescendo with the music at that point. And this is one of uh, my favorite rooms in the game as well. And uh, just everything just culminates together and it's just, it's just yeah, like... Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's very emotional. It's so yeah. emotional. It's really strong. Yeah, yeah. 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 I think for the story, but also for what we try to put together as a team, mm -hmm. it's all there and I think it's very emotional for us as well, just as a... Um, in relation to the project, you know. Right, absolutely. Environmental malfunction. Laboratory subsection 6. All lab chiefs, please report in. We better not take any chances. Not tonight. Use my elevator to get down there. You know the code? Yeah, 0451. Let me know what you find. Athena, get someone to shut off the damn racket. Yes, sir. Richard, where's Megan? Did she report in yet? Her GPL implant shows her moving through the microchem labs. I think she's running. Damn. Must have been a serious equipment failure. Can you get eyes on her? I'm trying, but the IntelliCams aren't responding. There's interference coming from somewhere. Find out what's happening, Jensen. Hurry! Richard! Richard! Before you can do anything, you must be able to get around. The first move you'll want to learn is the crouch. It will allow you to get into small spaces such as air vents, or to hide behind low objects so you can move about unnoticed. Jumping on objects or ladders is essential for getting to those hard to reach places. Sometimes going high or low is not enough. Sometimes you just need to go fast. You'll only be able to sprint for a few seconds at a time though, so use it wisely. So this section where the attack takes place, originally what we had what we had wanted to have was that you would actually go back through the area that you saw through the walk and talk um, and kind of do that kind of whole half-life thing where you take the descent down and then you fight your way back through everything you saw earlier but um, apparently the uh, remind me again JF I think the uh, the, de the original walk and talk was not designed no, the, the, the level? The, yeah the, the, the layout was the built level in such design, way yeah. that it, it, it was just made to be controlled, not to have uh, a player have total freedom. I mean, we would have had to change it a lot to make it yeah, gameplay kind of acceptable, yeah, yeah, and then yeah. we wouldn't have recognized it as, as the walk and talk. Because even Some objects in the environment can be picked up and moved. Use them to create paths to inaccessible areas, or as portable cover during a firefight. You can also throw them at the enemy, if need be. There are some places we didn't put collisions or anything. Exactly. Yeah. So in that sense, then, we had to kind of refigure a bit of the story in terms of... Actually, it came in better for us because then when you come later into Seraph Industries and you see the signs, you see parts that are under construction. And it's because, you know, it's where Megan went to um, in the elevator ride. So it ended up working out pretty good for us. True. When the lead starts to fly, it's wise to take cover. This will protect you from bullets and explosives. To shoot, peek out from behind your cover spot, either to the side or from above. Then take aim and fire. Whenever possible, use cover when moving around. Line of sight is important. And by keeping behind cover, you'll stand a better chance that enemies won't get a bead on you.
So here uh, in this uh, room we see the for the first time the two black ops uh, killing a scientist that he falls uh, of the, the guards and everything and that has been a crazy ride just to get this thing working. We were on the verge of cutting it mm. because it was really hard to have those scripted events mm. uh, working with the environment and with the physics and everything. Uh, it has been a nightmare and I fought until the last minute yeah. to make sure that, that we we uh, get this in and finally it worked. It worked it really was, well. It was I, I don't think most people realize, most gamers, uh, how hard it is just to put things like this. I mean depending on the engine that's being used but how hard it can be to have those cryptid events going it's just one guy being pushed over uh, yeah. you know railings but it's uh, especially when you don't have the tools and mm -hmm. <laughs> if you don't have the tools and on the audio side we worked really hard like for me it was a huge thing to try and really sense um, the show don't tell of the terrorist attack happening so like as you're walking and you're coming across dead bodies and that I thought it would be cool if we could hear the the sort of uh, the, the violence, the violence and the, the killings and all that before you see it and then when you would come around the corner you'd see the bodies laying there and it would kind of put it in context um, it didn't come out as hot and sexy as I hoped and wanted but it came out really cool and again there were certain limitations we had to deal with that was behind it but uh, the team came together and pulled out something that was really close to what we wanted mm -hmm. So here we're just before the corner where uh, Fedorova is introduced and uh, she kills uh, some guards. Uh, that was a lot of work and everything, but that sequence came quite late uh, during the development and, uh, and we realized too late that it wasn't working because we, we foreshadow it with the two guards being killed at the, the other end of the corridor. And we thought players would be attracted and see what's lurking um, uh, beyond the corner. But actually what happened is that most players were scared and they were just taking cover and waiting and waiting, waiting. Yeah, because they just saw people yeah. like getting getting gunned yeah. down and yeah. everything. So and obviously your first reflex yeah, is just to kind of hide or whatever. And then when they were getting on the corner, when they realized nothing was happening, the, the door was t already open. The scientist on the other side of the door was already killed. So like it was kind of, and most players, wa uh, it was like that. And yeah. we were like, oh, no. We're, and they never we're, got to see Fedorova yeah. and it was so important to try yeah. and set her up. And I remember that first animation that they had. Yeah, it was very... A little outside of what we wanted, I think, Fedorova to be, because she, uh, it's a bit of a clumsy sort of scene how it came together, and she, she sort of de dematerializes, and then materializes on the other side mm. of the door, and, and we even thought, like, to try and help that, we put in the sound, you, if you listen, you can hear, like, yeah. almost the footsteps in the vent yeah. Mm. Yeah. of, like, her traveling to yeah. the other side, but then... She'd kill the scientists and she'd look at the players and do this kind of almost like Betty Boop sort of like yeah. blowing you a kiss. And we're sort of like, yeah, it's, it's really not <laughs> really working and for us. And I think us. everybody was kind of like, that's not this killer, this silent killer. No. That's so the goal of this cutscene was really to surprise the player and, and get him. And I've always hated that shot of Megan because it makes it look like, what the heck is she doing while this terrorist attack is going on? It's supposed to be, is she a part of it? Whatever. She, she should have been to go to the bathroom. cowering in fear. But for the most part, I think this cutscene did a pretty good job of conveying the horror of what happens to Adam in the scene. Yeah. I remember feeling bad for him. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's almost loose. And you can really understand all those arguments. That I really hated. The, I really don't like the green acid. It's like so like uh, Saturday morning cartoons. I think it's all green. Like yeah. Ghostbusters. Yeah, yeah. yeah.
And here Namir is going to come to us and originally it was supposed to be in gameplay and actually we, we had the camera and everything. Yeah, we had a working prototype, but hey. So yeah, with uh, the opening credits, uh, actually uh, it seems like people really liked it. Uh, uh, our original inspiration was to kind of uh, the James Bond movies, the six million dollar man trying to to showcase this augmented character and everything, but we wanted it to be really stylish, really like mm. a James Bond movie. Sometimes they, they they go beyond, they go in the abstract. It's very stylized. Exactly. Yeah. So. It's actually more stylized than what we did. Those day with us. But uh, no, it works really, really well. I think Steve A, the sound, the, the track that's on him is just completely yeah, insane. Think, By the way, that's a pig. Sorry, I cut you. But when we see uh, the thing cutting the flesh, it's actually a real piece of pig oh, really? that was bought. Yeah. The um, when I saw the visuals, I mean, it was really impressed and really cool and um, I thought it was going to be really important to, to, to sort of nail it with the right music tone because um, I think something that wouldn't have worked as well might have undersold the, uh, the power of the scene but it was really powerful when I put the music to it with the visuals I was just kind of like yeah this couldn't work any better Mike right. uh, McCann the composer just really hit this one out of the park and the reaction we got when people saw it and heard it they loved it right away, even I think uh, Goldtooth, the people who produced the... Uh, yeah, who actually uh, put they, it together. They came back right away saying the music track is just, you know, selling this whole thing. It's yeah, bringing yeah it, all it really was. And I remember the dialogue in this. It's so funny because the dialogue is so short and so simple, but you needed it to convey basically some of the hinting of what's going on with yeah. Sarah forcing the augmentations but also we wanted it to sound like a real like surgery and the kind of thing so I remember giving it to one of the writers on staff and saying could you you know kind of write these opening lines and stuff and he was going on and in, in researching all about operations and CT, CCT scans mm -hmm. and all these things and and in the end those little details are so important just to make it and pop it even if you can't hear it it works